Welcome to another video in this mini series covering the advertising sets section within the Nano Beacon config tool. In the first two videos of this mini series, we covered some background information on how BLE advertising work, how the tag handles advertising, and how to configure the different advertising settings within the Nano Beacon config tool. If you haven't watched the last two videos on advertising sets, then I highly encourage you to go back and watch them before continuing on with this video. In this specific video, we'll be covering how to configure your tag to send out custom advertising data within the Nano Beacon config tool. So let's get started. Once you have the tool launched, navigate to the advertising section and then click on the edit button for the advertising set that you wish to customize. Here you'll be presented with a few options for data fields to include in the advertising packet. Once you hit on custom, you can see that the options are the device name, which is a string that you can define to label the device and its advertising packets. Next you have the TX power level, which indicates the transmit power level of the advertising packet. Then you have two highly customizable fields. One is the manufacturer specific data, and then you have the user defined data. The manufacturer specific data Data is an advertising data field that is defined by the Bluetooth specification and it requires you to include two bytes for the company ID, which you'll see here. The default value here in the tool is in place company ID, which is hex 0505, but you can replace this as you wish with any other company ID you want to use, including your own, and you can obtain your own from the SIG if your company is a member of the Bluetooth SIG. The user defined data is simply highly customized data that doesn't necessarily adhere to the Bluetooth specification. So think of it as raw data that your scanning device will have to parse based on the format that you define. Let's take a look at how we define the custom data portion of the manufacturer specific data or the user defined data. Now, if you click on edit for either of these fields, you'll be presented with the following screen. So let's go ahead and look at manufacturer specific data and hit edit. On the left, you have the actual raw bytes that will be included in the advertising packet. And then on the right hand side, you have the dynamic data, which is where you can choose what data is included in the packet. So let's take a look at the different options here. The first one that we have is the VCC measurement, which is one byte in length. For values that are two bytes or greater, we can choose to include it in big Endian format instead of little Endian which means that the most significant byte will be included first instead of the lowest significant byte. We also have the option to encrypt the data, which we'll cover in more detail in another video. Another option that we have here is the trigger snapshot. And when this is enabled, it includes a snapshot of the value when the trigger actually occurred instead of the value at the time of advertising. So for example, assume that we have set up a trigger for a high temperature threshold of 40 degrees. So the trigger snapshot option will allow the beacon to advertise the temperature data exactly when the trigger occurred instead of the real time measured temperature at the time of advertising. Next, we have the internal temperature which is the measured temperature from the internal temperature sensor, and it's two bytes in length. After that, we have the pulse count, which is a value collected by the one wire digital pulse controller, and this is also two bytes in length. We also have the GPIO status, which is one byte, and includes the statuses for all the GPIOs, each represented by one bit. So the status of GPIO 0 is in bit 0, GPIO 1 is in bit 1, and so on until the status of MGPIO 7 in bit 7. Next we have the ADC channels 0 through 3. This is the digital sampling of the external analog input to the corresponding mixed signal GPIO pin. And these are two bytes in length each. And next we have the I squared C slaves and there are three of them. For each of them, the readout is stored in a given address, and that is different per slave. But then once you choose the slave that you want to advertise the data that was read from, you get to choose the offset and the bytes. So within the data that was read from the I squared C slave, you get to choose which offset to read from and the number of bytes from that offset. Next, we have the timestamps zero and one. The timestamp zero uses 100 milliseconds as the unit, and timestamp one uses one second as the unit and each of them occupy four bytes. Then we have the advertising event count. And this is basically just the count of the number of advertising events sent out since boot up. 
Next, we have the register read data, and this allows you to include a reading of a specific register located at the address you specify here and the number of bytes. Then we have the random number, which is four bytes in length. And then the next three that we have, the encrypted raw data, the EAX salt, and the auth tag, those will cover in another video dedicated to encryption. Down the list, we have the customer product ID, which is the same value that we define in the main advertising screen. So if we go back to the advertising screen, we can see the customer ID is here. And as we mentioned before, this is a unique ID, can be assigned to each device and can be used like a serial number, for example, for assigning a unique number to each device during manufacturing. And the last one that we have is the Bluetooth device address. This has a fixed length of six bytes and just allows you to include the address that you had specified for the device in the advertising data. Now, in later videos, we'll be covering more examples with actual values and seeing how the advertising behaves based on data that's included in it. So whether you are then adding this data to the manufacturer specific data or the user defined data, in either case, you'll be represented with the same UI that is shown here, what we went through. And once you select the type of field that you want to include, you can just click it and then do append to data. Let's add the VCC and then the internal temperature. For example, we can append it, hit OK. And then if we go back and look at the raw advertising data, we'll see that we use the manufacturer specific data. We kept the ID as 0505. And then we also are presented with the details of what information is laid out. This is a very powerful feature because it tells you exactly what is there and more details on what's included. So you can know for sure that you created and crafted your advertising packet in the format that you want. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll cover more about encryption and authentication. So thank you for watching.